Hello students, welcome to the amazing platform of Physics Wala. Welcome to the PW English channel my dear students. Today we are going to start another chapter which is Chemical Kinetics. Today we are on the lecture 1 of Chemical Kinetics. I hope you have understood the previous two chapters, Solutions and Electrochemistry. Let me tell you, you need to practice a lot and you need to revise all the concepts. So let's start today's amazing session. What are we going to discuss today? We are going to discuss very basic things today. We will be discussing what is rate of chemical reaction. What is the need of calculating the rate of a chemical reaction. And then we will be discussing about various factors that affect the rate of a reaction. Last we will be discussing about order and molecularity. I hope all of you are excited. Now let's start the session. Uh, just a second. First I will just set the background. Okay, perfect. Okay, my dear students, let's start the session. Now, first and the most important question that needs to come in your mind is what is the need of studying the rate of reaction? So, just let me give you a little introduction that why it is necessary. So, my dear students, you all might have studied a chapter in 11th which is thermodynamics, right? Yes. What was this chapter all about? It was about whether a particular reaction is spontaneous or not. Whether a reaction will take place or not. Let's say you have a reactant A and it goes to B. Right? Yes. Now my dear students, let us say, let us say that the Gibbs free energy of this particular reaction is negative. If we calculate the Gibbs free energy of a particular reaction and it comes out to be negative, we say the reaction is spontaneous. Right? Yes. And if... Delta G of the reaction is positive, we say the reaction is non-spontaneous. So, this is something which we studied in thermodynamics, that whether a particular reaction is feasible or not. If delta G is negative, it is spontaneous, it will be feasible, right? Yes, else it will not be feasible. So, these were the few terms which we studied in thermodynamics. So, what actually thermodynamics told you? That if you have a particular reaction, whether that reaction is possible or not, that is what a thermodynamics, uh, that is what thermodynamics tells you and that is the beauty of thermodynamics, okay? Yes. But ma'am, why are you telling us about this in the chemical kinetics chapter? Because assume you are a scientist and you want to carry, uh, you want to uh, uh, perform a particular reaction. And now you have studied its thermodynamic parameters and you have studied that the, yes, this particular reaction is spontaneous. You will obviously start that reaction and uh, wait for the products to form, right? Yes. Now, my dear students, it might be that the reaction will take place, uh, will start uh, forming products in 2 hours, maybe in 10 hours, maybe in 1 day or maybe in 2 day or might it take 10 years or be it 20 years as well, right? Yes, the reaction is possible, the reaction is feasible. But you don't know at what rate that reaction will take place. So, will you be waiting for 10 to 20 uh, years for a particular reaction to complete? No. This means that with the factor that whether a reaction is possible or not, we need another factor that what is the rate of that particular reaction. Right? Yes. And here comes the need of our chapter which we will be discussing which is chemical kinetics. So, thermodynamics actually tells you whether a reaction is possible or not and and then comes the role of chemical kinetics. This chemical kinetics actually tells you the rate of a reaction. That when can you approximately expect the products to be formed. Okay. So, this is the beauty of chemistry that you can also find out that whether a reaction is possible or not. At the same time, you can see that is it possible for a person to perform and uh, study a particular reaction or not. Okay. So, this is the basic introduction of chemical kinetics. If you want to write it, you can write it, but there is nothing to write. We will move forward. Okay. Let us move forward, my dear students. So, 
इन केमिकल काइनेटिक्स व्हाट ऑल वी डिस्कस आई हैव गिवन यू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ द आइडिया रेट्स ऑफ द केमिकल रिएक्शंस यू स्टडी अबाउट द रेट्स ऑफ द केमिकल रिएक्शन देन यू हैव फैक्टर्स दैट कैन चेंज द रेट ऑफ अ रिएक्शन ऑब्वियसली यू स्टडी अबाउट रेट ऑफ रिएक्शन एंड एवरीथिंग अराउंड इट नाउ यू ऑल्सो स्टडी व्हाट आर द फैक्टर्स व्हिच यू कैन try to increase the rate of a reaction or for a very fast reaction you might need some factors that will decrease the rate of that reaction so you need to understand the various factors that will affect the rate of reaction so second is this third is application of kinetics in reaction mechanisms now my dear students reaction mechanisms this particular part you will be studying uh, studying in organic chemistry so we'll be we only discussing the upper two parts okay yes perfect we will discuss the applications in the organic chemistry it is written here as well okay perfect i hope it's clear to you now now let's start the chapter so now my dear students rate of chemical reaction it is the amount of chemical change occurring per unit time so before understanding this i just want to ask you you might have studied physics a little bit yes you might have studied so in physics you also know a formula where you say speed is equal to distance covered upon time taken right yes now we'll be using this particular concept in chemistry in chemistry in chemistry if i this was the speed and for speed you said the distance you have covered upon the time you have taken now if i ask you if i ask you my dear students can you tell me can you tell me let's say speed is rate in chemistry and let's it you have a reaction a to b now i want to know the rate of this reaction you know the this is re, these are the reactants and these are the products yes now my dear students imagine i want to know in chemistry the rate of a reaction try to use the concept of speed and uh, give me a formula for rate of reaction try to you know uh, sync them okay now let's talk about rate of a chemical reaction what happens in a chemical reaction ma'am reactants are used are consumed and products are formed so can i define can i define rate in terms of uh, reactants and products yes yes you can do you know that you know that products are formed so can i say that rate is equal to products formed amount of the products that are formed upon time taken we can say that also we can say that rate is actually equal to reactants consumed reactants consumed upon time taken can we say this yes we can say this right so we are defining the rate of a reaction in terms of products and reactants in this particular way yes i hope you're clear with this you don't have any problem so please write it and then i'll i'll move forward pause the video write it and then we'll move forward okay i hope you've written it now my dear students now my dear students we'll be just elaborating this a little more you have reactant a and it is giving you product b you know that rate is actually equal to and let me tell you in chemistry rate is always positive you will only talk about the positive rate okay there's no nothing called as a negative rate okay so now now we need we could ensure that this value will always be a positive value okay so now if you want to give me a formula if you want to give me a formula for rate of a reaction in terms of amount of products how will you give me you know that initially the products were lesser and as the reaction takes place more and more of products are formed so this means that final products are more amount of products are formed are more as compared to the initial so can i say that can i say that p final minus p initial is the amount of product formed in a particular time span right yes and let's say this is equal to delta t so this means that p is the products formed and p initial is the initial products okay and delta t is the time taken okay this is the time taken 
so for a particular span of time we have seen what was the initial amount of products and what is the final amount of products okay so now i also know that p final will always be more than p initial because more of the products will be formed with time this means that ma'am it is delta p upon delta t and this is a positive value right yes so this is the first formula in which you uh, according to which you can explain the rate okay now let's try to explain the rate with respect to the reactants okay so if i talk about rate i know that this will be a positive value and for reactants and for reactants my dear students we'll say r final minus r initial upon delta t where what is r final uh final amount of products sorry final amount of reactants and what is our initial initial amount of reactants right yes and what is delta t delta t is still the time taken so now i also know that with the time going forward more and more of your reactants are getting consumed this means that your r initial will be more than r final because more and more of your reactants are getting consumed so with time its concentration or its amount is decreasing right so if i say r final minus my minus r initial this means that delta r and my dear students this will be a negative value upon delta t i hope you can understand this part that this is actually negative value right yes this is what i want to tell you i'll just write it here as well your delta r will be a negative value okay now since this is negative and we know that we want the rate overall to be positive so what will we do to ensure that the rate always comes to be positive we'll say that we'll put a negative sign here now negative into negative will give you a positive value right yes so the formula for rate calculation of rate in terms of reactants will be this and for calculation of the products will be this right yes so this is how this is how my dear students this is how we calculate the rate of a particular reaction okay i hope it's clear and these formulas we will be using again and again in terms of products it is always plus of delta p by delta t and in terms of uh, reactants it is always minus of delta r by delta t and this is generally the concentration it has always the unit of concentration it has always the unit of concentration what is concentration your molarity we'll use it in the formulas and you will understand it please pause the video write it and then we'll move forward okay i hope now you will get this that rate of a chemical reaction it is the amount of chemical change occurring per unit time now it could be the chemical change with respect to products it could be the change with respect to the reactants okay so it is this is how you define the rate of a chemical reaction we only discuss the chemical change in one direction the most important thing my dear students initially we used to say that there is an equilibrium present between reactants and products but for this particular chapter we will be taking only unidirectional reactions that is we will be considering that the reaction is taking place only in one particular direction okay perfect the amount of chemical change can be measured in terms of decrease now this is the most important part that you can study it with respect to the decrease in the concentration of reactants or it could be increase in the concentration of products increase in the concentration of products okay so these are the two types of the rates you can calculate either with respect to products or with respect to reactants okay perfect if you want to write it pause the video you can write it and then we'll move forward okay now let's start my dear students i hope you're clear till now now when we talk about rate rate could be calculated in two different ways now we'll be discussing what are those two different ways so if you talk about rate so rate can be calculated in two different types my dear students one is your average rate 
and the other is your instantaneous rate. Okay, now we'll be understanding each one by one. What is your average rate? When you talk about average rate, average rate is actually calculated over a long span of time. It is actually calculated over a long interval of time. So first we'll write that average rate is calculated over a long interval of time. Or over a interval of time. Okay, you can say over a interval of time. And if you talk about the instantaneous rate, my dear students, what is instantaneous rate? Instantaneous rate is the rate calculated over a particular instant. So it is calculated over a over an instant. Okay. So, if we talk about, if we talk about the formula for an average rate, if you're talking about over a long interval of time, you had some initial reactants or products, you had some initial uh, final reactants or products, you took the difference uh, at uh, in a particular span of time, how much amount of the change has taken place and you calculate the rate. So, this is how you calculate the rate which we discussed a little bit earlier. So, your average rate is given as plus of delta P by delta t or minus of delta r by delta t. Now let's talk about instantaneous rate. How do you calculate instantaneous rate? You calculate over an instant and uh, you might for the J students it is oh, okay fine you'll understand it but for the NEET students they need to understand when you calculate something for a very small very a very small part let us say a very small dr part you actually calculate the uh, you calculated as rate is equal to plus dr dp by dt or you could say minus of dr by dt. What is dr and dp? It is a very small change in products or a very small change in reactants. Okay. And that is denoted by dp and dr. Okay. So, this is how you calculate the instantaneous rate. So, this is your average rate. This is your instantaneous rate. We'll be starting it a little bit more with the graph, but you need to understand this. Write it and then we'll move forward. Okay. I hope you've written it. Can we move forward? Now let's move forward, my dear students. Let's talk, uh, let's discuss both the rates with the graph. Okay. So let's say you have concentration here and you have time here. Okay. So when you talk about, when you talk about rate, my dear students, initially what happens is we are talking about the concentration of reactants. We are actually talking about the concentration of reactants here. So with time, initially you had a lot of reactant. Okay. Uh, this is something uh, like you get your pocket money uh, in the starting part, in the starting month of the day, uh, in, in the starting month, you get your pocket money. You have a lot of money. What will you do? You'll just spend it without thinking anything. Right? Yeah. But with the time, however, with the time, your um, pocket money will... Uh, get consumed yes and then you will be left with a small amount of money and now you have to uh, you have to use that money for the whole month so you will think a little more before spending it that is you will be a little cautious and near to the end of the month you will be very very uh, serious about using your money right yes and then you will not spend that much exactly like exactly like that happens with the reactants what happens is initially initially when there is a lot of reactant your rate is very high okay and it is the highest and with time with time what happens is the rate uh, goes on to be being stagnant okay it keeps on decreasing 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 and it at one point it gets stagnant so the graph that you can see is something like this Okay, so this is the plot that you can see with the concentration of the reactants versus time. Okay, with time, my dear students, if you see, the rate will be decreasing, right? The rate will be decreasing. I hope you're clear with this. Now, we will be discussing about both the rates here, average rate and instantaneous rate. Let's talk about average rate. Since we are talking about the concentration of reactants, so we will say minus of dr delta r by delta t. 
right yes this means that this will be equal to minus of r final minus r initial upon a interval of time delta t let's say this was your uh, let's say uh, this is your r initial and this is and that corresponding time would be this this is your time initial and let's say this is your r final and with time this would be your uh, time final okay you will calculate this and you will calculate this this whole will be your average rate this whole will be your average rate so this is how you calculate the average rate okay i hope you are clear with this that this is how you calculate the rate now my dear students this was your average rate if i talk about the instantaneous rate how will you write the instantaneous rate for instantaneous rate you will say minus of dr by dt you will be calculating the change in concentration of the reactants at one particular instant and let's say this is the instant that you need to calculate the rate so my dear students for instantaneous rate you draw a tangent here and this is how you calculate the instantaneous rate so this is your average rate and this is with the tangent you study the instantaneous rate instantaneous rate is the re uh, rate at a particular instant okay so this is the difference between the average rate and instantaneous rate i hope you are clear with this if you want to draw it you can draw it and then we'll move forward okay now let's move forward since the rate itself changes with time you know that with every instant obviously the rate will be changing and that is the reason instantaneous rate is much better than the average rate instantaneous rate gives you accurate values as compared to the average rate okay yes this is what it is written you can write it and then we'll move forward okay so now my dear students we'll be discussing about the various factors that affect the rate of a reaction how a rate of a reaction gets affected it could be first concentration of reactants the you know that the more the concentration of reactants the more will be the rate yes so so concentration of reactants is a major factor that affects the rate of a reaction the next is temperature my dear students uh, some there are a few reactions which take uh, which are a little bit faster at a whose rate is faster at high temperatures so temperature really affects the rate of a reaction so your second factor that affects is temperature third is your nature of reaction what nature of reaction you are uh, what nature what is the nature of the reaction that you are taking place is actually actually affects the rate of a reaction and the fourth is your catalyst and the fourth is your catalyst we'll be discussing all of these in this particular chapter these will be discussed later and right now we'll be discussing about the concentration of the reactant we'll be talking about the concentration of the reactant okay but this is a very important question many a times in your uh, competitive exams question can come that which of the following factors affect the rate of a reaction or which of the following factors does not affect the rate of a reaction so you need to know the factors please pause the video write it and then we'll move forward okay i hope you've written it now let's move forward my dear students now now we have discussed that the rate of a reaction actually depends on the concentration of the reactant now we'll be discussing that how it affects the rate of a reaction the concentration of the reactant okay so for that you need to assume a chemical reaction let's say you have from a to b so now my dear students when you when you give the rate of this reaction that is given by that is given by rate is actually directly proportional to the concentration of the reactant raised to the power order of the reaction this is the rate law this is the rate law i'll i'll make you write also the rate law but what does rate law say that the rate of the reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants raised to the power of their order okay so let me tell you what all they denote r is your rate a is your concentration of reactant it is always molarity my dear students that is mole per liter and if you talk about n n is the order of reaction so if we define the rate law what will we say according to rate law according to rate law rate of a reaction 
is directly proportional to the concentration of reactant raised to the power order now my dear students what is order order is a experimental quantity which we will be discussing in the next section right yes from for here you can understand that rate law says that the rate of a reaction is directly proportional to the concentration of the reactants raised to the power their order okay yes so you you want to write it you can write it and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it okay so now my dear students just see we know that r is directly proportional to a raised to the power n if we remove the proportionality we'll add a proportionality constant which is k a raised to the power n so here what is k k is your rate constant it has a specific name which is rate constant okay and it has a very big role to play it has a very big role to play here okay so now if i talk about k k is given as rate upon a power n okay i hope you are clear with this this is how we talk about the rate constant so now my dear students let's discuss a little bit about rate constant we'll be discussing complete about rate constant in the further sections also but a little bit of the information about rate constant which you need to know right now is that rate constant k depends on first is your my dear students temperature and the second is nature of reaction so now what i wanted to tell you here is that since you see that rate uh, rate constant is equal to rate upon concentration of the reactant raised to the power n my dear students your rate constant is a constant value which doesn't depend on the rate of the reaction or on the concentration of the reactants if you increase this obviously the rate will increase and their ratio will always remain same that is your constant value but this particular rate constant actually depends on two factors first is the temperature and the second is the nature of reaction which we will be discussing in the further sections okay for now you just need to know that rate constant depends on these two factors okay this was a little bit about rate constant next we will be discussing about the unit of rate constant rate constant now how do we calculate the unit of rate constant is a very uh, major part we talk about the rate constant as r upon a raised to the power n now if i talk about rate i hope all of you remember that initially rate was actually equal to if we talk about the reactants minus of delta r by delta t and i told you that this is always your concentration that is moles per liter and delta t my dear students so this is seconds okay so if i talk about the unit of rate what will be the unit of rate mole per liter per second this is the unit of rate if you see there you can see so we'll say that the unit of rate is mole liter inverse second inverse divided by if you talk about a my dear students what is a a is the concentration of reactant and concentration is always in moles per liter so ma'am this will be moles liter inverse whole power n okay so now let's try to solve this this will be mole liter inverse second inverse upon mole power n liter minus 1 so this will be mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second inverse so this is the this is actually the unit this is actually the unit of rate constant k so this is the unit of rate constant k my dear students which is mole 1 minus n second inverse okay i hope it's clear 
and what is the importance of this you will just understand we will be talking about various different orders of reaction we will be talking about zero order reaction first order reaction second order reaction so the major part which is played is actually by the rate constant so if i talk about the units of rate constant you only have to write this i'll give you time you know that the unit of rate constant k is given by mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second inverse this is the general formula so if you have a zero order reaction for a zero order reaction i hope you remember that the n was given by for order so the for zero order reaction n value will be zero right yes so the unit of k would be mole uh 1 minus 0 liter 0 minus 1 second inverse which will be equal to mole liter inverse second inverse so this is the unit of rate constant for a zero order reaction let's talk about if we had a first order reaction so for a first order reaction what will you say that for a first order reaction your n value will be equal to 1 your n value will be equal to 1 right yes so the unit of k will be equal to mole 1 minus 1 liter 1 minus 1 second inverse so second inverse will be the unit of the rate constant so this is how for different orders of reaction the unit of rate constant keeps on changing and this is very important this can be asked from by you, for from you in various exams okay so this is the beauty of rate constant so these are the few things which we need to understand you can pause the video and write everything down you can write this down and you can write this down okay okay so now so now we have studied uh various different things we have calculated the rate in a in one particular average rate and instantaneous rate format and also we have studied how to calculate the rate according to the rate law so now if i give you a particular reaction let's say again i am giving you a to b reaction my dear students so we can say that the rate of this particular reaction the instantaneous rate is minus since a is a reactants minus da by dt i can say this with respect to products what can i say this is equal to plus db by dt because b is your product and also my dear students according to the rate law according to the rate law what can i say that rate is equal to k times a raised to the power n we don't know what is the order of the reaction but let's say the order of the reaction is n okay so you can say these three different things right yes and you know that all the three are actually actually the rates of the same reaction so this means that all the three should be equal and that is the beauty my dear students rate is actually equal to minus da by dt this is also equal to db by dt with respect to the products and with respect to the rate law it is also equal to k a raised to the power n so this is the most important part that you have today studied that how to write the rate of a particular reaction in different forms okay so this is how you can write the rate of the reaction I hope you are clear with this you can pause the video you can write it and then we'll move forward Okay I hope you've written it now now the same thing you have to do for this particular reaction and from here I'll be teaching you a one a new thing which you will always remember and you will be very crystal clear with that okay till now my dear students at this particular reaction I had no coefficients with a or b what happens if we have some coefficients then how are we going to calculate the rate today you will be understanding this as well okay so if you have something like this so can i say that can i say that the rate is actually equal to since a is a reactant so minus concentration of a by dt yes this was something which we knew but my dear students always remember that whenever you have a coefficient with your reactant always put it one upon so this is the actual expression when you have coefficients with your 
reactants so rate with respect to the concentration of a will be minus of da by dt upon 2d minus of da upon 2dt okay since this is for the same reaction i can say that this is equal to minus of db because b is also a reactant upon dt and the coefficient is 3 so 1 by 3 okay and now if we talk about the same reactions rate with respect to products i can say that c is a product yes ma'am so since it is a product plus d c by dt since there is no coefficient so 1 upon 1 is 1 let's talk about d since it is a product so plus d of d by dt and since the coefficient is 4 so 1 upon 4 okay and according to the rate law my dear students according to the rate law according to the rate law you can also write it as k into a raised to the power if we consider that the coefficients are only the order with respect to them we consider this i'll just tell you that when you consider and when you don't but till if for the time being if we consider that these are the orders then this is a power 2 and b power 3 so, this is how you can calculate the rate of a particular reaction in different forms and all these rates are actually equal. All these rates are actually equal. Okay. Yes. I hope you got this. You can pause the video, write it and then we'll move forward. I hope you've written it. Can we move forward? Yes. So now let's move forward. The rate constant K does not de uh, depend on the concentration, but it depends on the nature of the reaction and temperature. This is something I told you. So you need to understand this that the it depends on the nature of the reaction first part and also it depends on the temperature. Okay. Uh, I have also told you before, you want to write it, you can write, rate law is experimentally verified and it may not correspond to the stoichiometric coefficients. So, my dear students, what we say, that whenever you write rate law, you say R is, let's say we are talking about 2A to B. So, we can say that R is equal to K A raised to the power N. I, I'll just make you ex ex understand this. Let's say you have a reaction of A A plus BB goes to CC. Okay. So, let's say this is the particular reaction and you have to write the rate law. You have to write the rate according to the rate law. So, you will say R is equal to K A raised to the power X and B raised to the power Y. Sorry, B raised to the power B. Oh, sorry, Y. Yes. Now, now my dear students, there are two possibilities. Either, either x could be equal to a or x could not be equal to a. Because my dear students, x is x and y here are the orders. So, you have to write it that x is the order with respect to a and y is the order with respect to b and x plus y is the overall order of the reaction whereas my dear students a is the stoich it is the stoichiometric coefficient with respect to a and b is the stoichiometric coefficient with respect to b so what i want to tell you is that my dear students this x might not be equal to a and this y might not be equal to b it is not necessary that in every reaction in every reaction my dear students the stoichiometric coefficient and the order will be same it is not necessary because orders are calculated experimentally and they may or may not be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients i'll tell you when your order will be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients that i will tell you in the next section but till now you can understand that when we write the rate law the power with respect to the reactants is actually the order of the reaction and that is calculated experimentally. It might or might not be equal to the 
stoichiometric coefficients okay so this is something that you need to understand so first write it and then you have to write the point which i will tell you okay so just write it before okay i hope you've written it now see rate law is experimentally verified my dear students it is experimentally verified and it may not correspond to the stoichiometric coefficient maybe every time your order is not equal to the stoichiometric coefficients okay so you need to write this point it is an important point write it down okay i hope you've written it now now i'll make you understand what is order of a reaction so now my dear students the n value which we write in the rate law is actually the order of the reaction and order of the reaction is always calculated experimentally you cannot calculate it calculate it on your own it is always experimental and since it is always experimental it can have any value it can be a positive value it can be a negative value it can even be a fraction okay so this is what is order it is the number of concentration terms involved in the rate equation okay and and it can also it can carry different values okay we'll talk about it i hope you're clear r is equal to k a raised to the power n where this n is the order of reaction and this order of reaction is actually calculated experimentally okay pause the video write it so now how are you generally asked to calculate the order so you are given some information like this these types of questions are generally asked so some information is given like this and you have to find the order of this particular reaction so you are given everything for a particular reaction let's say let's say the reaction is r is equal to k a is your reactant and also b is your reactant let's say the order with respect to a is small a and the order with respect to b is small b okay so now we are going to calculate this let's write the equations so your first equation will be rate let's see what is the rate 0.1 so 0.1 i'll write here rate is equal to k a raised to the power a and b raised to the power b okay so 0.1 is equal to since my dear students k depends on the only on the nature of the reaction and nature of reaction is exactly same and temperature temperature is not changing so your rate constant will not change the value of rate constant will be a constant value so ma'am this will be something k divide uh, into concentration of a is 0.01 raised to the power a and concentration of b is 0.01 raised to the power b so this is your first equation similarly you have to write all the equations for this and this as well uh, 0.2 is equal to 0.02 0.2 is equal to k into 0.02 raised to the power a and this will be 0.01 raised to the power b this is your second equation similarly the third equation 0.4 is equal to k concentration of a is 0.01 raised to the power a and 0.02 raised to the power b this is your third equation so now you have to calculate the values of a and b how can you calculate okay you have these three equations so what you are what you should do is take some value where you can cancel one of the reactants concentration if i take this and this i can cancel the i can cancel the concentration of a so i'll divide third equation by first so i'll get 0.4 is equal to k into 0.01 a and this will be 0.02 b divided by 0.1 is equal to k into 0.01 a and this will be 0.01 b see k is same this whole part is same this will be cancelled 0.4 upon 0.1 is 4 upon 1 this will be equal to 2 upon 1 whole power b so 4 is equal to 2 power b 2 square is equal to 2 power b so your value for b is actually equal to right yes so this is how you have calculated b value similarly now you have to 
take equations such that you can cancel the concentration of B and then you will calculate the value of A. Where which, which values we can use? You can use 2 and 1. So, divide second equation by first. So, you will get 0 0.2 is equal to K into 0 0.02 power a and this will be 0 0.01 power b divided by 0 0.1 is equal to k 0 0.01 a and this will be again 0 0.01 b this is same cancelled k is same cancelled so 2 upon 1 is actually equal to 2 upon 1 whole power a so i can say 2 is equal to 2 power a so a is actually equal to 1 so you got the order with respect to the both the reactants a and b so order with respect to A is 1 and order with respect to B is 2 and the overall order is A plus B which is 1 plus 2 which is equal to 3. So, this is how you calculate the orders. Okay, This is how you have to make equations and you calculate them and write the orders okay so you can pause the video write it and then we'll move forward perfect i hope you're clear with this now therefore order is an experimental quantity so from here we saw that it is a experimental quantity right it is an experimental quantity and it may not correspond to the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants it is not necessary that it will be equal to the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactants it can have any different value and also my dear students order of a reaction can have different values it can be a positive value it can be a negative value also my dear students it can be a fraction also it can be a fraction okay because order is experimental so it can have any different value it can be positive negative or it could be a fractional value okay so this is the beauty of order so please write it and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it let's move forward my dear students now now my dear students i want to tell you that the reactions which we study are two different types of reactions either it is a single step reaction or it is a multi step reaction for a single step reaction we, let's say that you had a reactant a and it gave you a product b so this is a one step reaction uh, elementary reaction and if you talk about multi step reactions these are let's say from a you got d as your product this is the main reaction that you see but it this reaction actually has a mechanism to it and what happens actually is first a gets converted to 2b and this 2b actually gets converted to let us say c and then this c actually gets converted to d so your overall reaction is a to d but how has this taken place first a formed 2b then 2b formed c then c formed d this is a multi-step reaction it has a mechanism okay and these types of reactions are the complex form of complex reactions and this is the elementary reaction so also known as elementary reaction okay perfect i hope you're clear with this okay so what is a one-step reaction a reaction where reactant gets converted to the product but what is a multi-step reaction where we see that a reactant is getting converted into a product but it takes place in many steps okay and now you will understand the major difference between order and a word that is known as molecularity. What is molecularity? My dear students, molecularity is actually that the number of reactants that are taking place in a particular reaction. Molecularity is defined as the amount of the, that the number of reactants taking place in a particular reaction and molecularity is always and always defined for a single step reaction it cannot be defined for a multi-step reaction it can never be defined for a multi-step reaction it is always for a single step reaction so now we will be discussing about multi sorry molecularity okay so first write it and then we'll move forward
let's talk about molecularity the state when the bond fission okay we'll be talking about we'll be talking about the uh, different state transition state in a particular reaction uh, i'll i'll discuss this topic later first we'll be talking about molecularity okay so what is molecularity molecularity actually is a theoretical concept and it is the number of molecules it is actually the number of molecules taking part in one step or a, of a chemical reaction it is only defined for a single step it cannot be defined for a complex reaction okay it is the number of molecules colliding simultaneously in one step of a chemical reaction so so if some if in any form a question is asked that give the molecularity of a complex reaction you will always say that the molecularity cannot be defined it will always be defined for a single step reaction for a multi step reaction there is no molecularity to be defined okay yes so what does this say that let's say you have a reactant a and you had a reactant b so these two collided and gave you a product which is a b so the molecularity of this particular reaction which was a plus b gave you a b was molecularity was 2 because actually two molecules of your reactant were taking place so what is molecularity the number of molecules that are taking place in a the action so either two uh, two molecules could uh, take place in a reaction or it could be you have a you have b you have c and they give you a b c as your product so a b and c see my dear students the most important thing is that for molecularity all the reactants need to collide with each other simultaneously okay so the maximum molecularity that a reaction can have is 3 it cannot have molecularity more than 3 which means that this is the maximum that a, rea uh, a reaction can have its molarity equal to imagine imagine you have a reaction where four molecules are taking place you have a you have b you have c and you have d now if they collide then will they touch each other at the same time you have a you have b you have c and you have d you will see that a is touching b a is touching c but is c touching b no right similarly similarly is a touching d no this means that my dear students molecularity cannot be defined for them so molecularity's maximum value is 3 because more than 4 more than 3 molecules that is 4 cannot collide with each other and always molecularity will be a whole number it cannot be a negative value it cannot be a fraction okay and it will have a maximum value of 3 i hope you can understand so here so what do we say we say that molecularity cannot be it will be written also molecularity cannot be equal to 4 okay so if you want to write it you can write it and then we'll move forward i hope you've written it now see since the probability of simultaneous collision of more than 3 molecules is very rare molecularity does not exceed the value of Three. The thing I explained you, it is written here. Molecularity is always a positive integer because uh, always there will be one, two, or three reactants present. It cannot be a negative value. It cannot be a fraction. Okay, so you can write it. It cannot be negative. It cannot be fraction. It cannot be a fraction. Okay I hope you're clear with this pause the video write it Okay let's move forward Molecularity is gettable from the stoichiometric coefficient see when i said when i said that the stoichiometric co uh, coefficients actually not all the time denote the order that is true but for a single step reaction since molecularity is defined only for a single step reaction molecularity is always equal to the stoichiometric coefficients imagine you had you had 2a plus b giving you c and it is a single step reaction what is molecularity the number of reactants taking part in the reaction how many reactants are taking part 2 and 1 so can i say the molecularity is actually 3 yes and what is 
this the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients so my dear students molecularity is always equal to the stoichiometric coefficients for single step reactions right because molecularity is defined for single step reaction and for single step reaction molecularity is always equal to the stoichiometric coefficients okay next to get the molecularity we must take the smallest integer see i'll give you the example of this as well imagine imagine i had a reaction h2 plus i2 gave me 2hi i also have a reaction where 2h2 plus i2 gave me 2hi i also so uh, sorry uh, gave me 4hi i also have a i also have a reaction where half h2 plus half i2 gave me hi okay so now the reaction is same everywhere hi is getting formed but can you tell me the molecularities you will say that ma'am if this is a single step reaction then molecularity here is 1 plus 1 2 if this is a single step reaction then molecularity should be equal to 4 if this is a single step reaction then molecularity should be equal to 1 which of then the same reaction has different molecularities this is never possible every reaction has its individual molecularity and that is what is given in this particular part this part says that when you have these types of reactions always try to uh, convert it into the simplest form see if i take two common from here i'll get this reaction if i multiply with two i'll get this reaction so this is the actual molarity and uh, molecularity and not these two the simplest form of the reaction will give you the molecularity okay so this is what is given here to get the molecularity we must take the smallest integer value of the stoichiometric coefficients of the individual reactant and thereafter we need to get the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients okay i hope you are clear with this this was the most important part about molecularity so pause the video write it understand it and then we'll move forward i hope you are clear with this perfect let's move forward for elementary step order and molecularity are numerically equal now see my dear students if you talk about a elementary step that is a single step reaction for single step reaction my dear students order is always equal to the molecularity because it is a single step for complex reactions you calculate the order experimentally and for complex reactions molecularity cannot be defined okay so if anyone asks you when is order equal to molecularity for single step reactions order is always equal to the molecularity and this is a very important point to know because generally questions are asked from this particular part okay order of one step reaction cannot be fraction and from this we can say that since order of one step reaction will be equal to molecularity and molecularity can never be a fraction that means that for a single step reaction order will never be negative or fraction it will always be a positive value because it has to be equal to the molecularity as well right yes so these two points are very very important write them and then we'll move forward I hope you've written it. Now let's move forward and try to solve a few questions. The first question is on your screen. You have to try it. We have discussed every part and then I have given you these questions. So what does the question say? The question says that the differential rate law equation for the elementary reaction is this. For so so my dear students, you have to consider that this is a single step reaction and now you can say that order will be equal to molecularity, right? For a uh, single step reaction, the order is always equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. Try doing this, okay? So your reaction is A plus 2B gives you 3C. you have to pause the video try the question yourself now see rate will be equal to rate will be equal to since a is a reactant so minus da by dt i don't have any stoichiometric coefficient here so we'll not write it is equal to minus since b is also a reactant db by dt and this will be 1 upon 2 now this will be equal to plus because c is a reactant 1 upon 3 dc by d right and this will be equal to my dear students according to the rate law k into reactant a raised to the power of stoichiometric coefficient which is 1 and then b raised to the power of stoichiometric coefficient which is 
2. So, this is the actual rate law. Minus dA by dt will be equal to minus 1 by 2 dB by dt will be equal to plus 1 by 3 dC by dt. And then, so option C will be your correct answer. So, this is how you will be solving these types of questions. Okay, perfect. You can pause the video, write it and then we'll move forward. Next question. The next question is on your screen. Try the question yourself. The rate of reaction, the rate of reaction is expressed in different ways as follows. The reaction is, now the reaction rate of reaction is given, you have to give the reaction. So, you know that for reactants, it is always negative. For products, it is always positive. 1 upon gives you the stoichiometric coefficient of that particular reactant or product. So, let us try to do. Since C has a positive value, so it will be a product and it has a stoichiometric co coefficient 2. Since D is a negative value, so it is a reactant and its stoichiometric coefficient is 3. Since A is a positive value, so it should be a product and its stoichiometric coefficient is 4. Since B is a negative value, so it should be a reactant and the stoichiometric coefficient is 1. So, B plus 3D gives you 4A plus 2C. So, option B will be your correct answer. So, this is how you will be solving this particular question. Awesome, my dear students. Perfect. Now, let us move forward to the next question. Next question is on your screen. In the reaction, A plus 2B gives uh, 2C plus 2D if the initial rate minus dA by dt at t is equal to 0 is this. This is 2.6. Okay. So, you are given the value of minus dA by dt equal to minus 2.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. What will be the value of minus dB by dt? You have to give the value of minus dB by dt. Let us calculate. You have been given the reaction. Yes. So, let us write the reaction A plus 2B gives you 6C plus 2D. If I write the rate law, I can say R will be equal to minus dA by dt will be equal to minus 1 by 2 dB by dt. This will be equal to plus 1 by 6 dC by dt and this will be equal to plus 1 by 2 D of D by dt. Right. This is what we can say. See now, my dear students, what two factors are we supposed to, are we supposed to equate A and B? So, we will have to equate these two particular parts. So, let us use these. Uh, minus dA by dt is equal to minus 2.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. So, see my dear students, minus dA by dt will be equal to minus 1 by 2 dB by dt. This is what the value is given. Yes. And this is plus 2.6. It is not minus. It is plus. So, this should be plus. Okay. Perfect. No issues. Now, see. Negative, negative cancelled. And the value of dA by dt is 2.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. This will be equal to 1 upon 2 dB by dt. Right. Yes. So, can you say that dB by dt will be equal to 2 into 2.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 which is equal to 6 to 12. So, 2, 1, 2 to 4, 1, 5, 5.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. So, 5.2 into 10 raised to the power minus 2 option C will be your correct answer. This is how you will be solving this part of the question. Okay. Please write it and then we will move forward. I hope you have written it. Can we move forward? Yes. Let us move forward. Next question, my dear students. The rate of the reaction is expressed in different ways as follows. Not the rate, my dear students, the rate constant. You have to give the rate constant. Okay. Let us see. Here, my dear students, rate constant unit will be mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second inverse. So, mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1. Mole 1 minus n liter 1 minus n. No. Mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1. Mole 1 minus n. Yes. So, option D will be your correct answer. Okay. So, you only had to do this. Perfect. Let us move forward my dear students. Next question. 
the question says that which of the following uh, statement is incorrect you have to tell me which of the following statement is incorrect okay so try to read all the uh, statements first first is unit of rate of disappearance is so my dear students if you talk about the unit of rate it is always it is always da by dt this is moles per liter upon second which means that molarity upon second so molarity second inverse molarity second inverse yes this is absolutely correct you have to tell the incorrect one second is unit of rate of reaction is unit of rate of disappearance is, is correct the rate of reaction either it is rate of disappearance or it is rate of appearance or it is rate every unit for rate will be molarity second inverse or mole liter inverse second inverse so this is also correct unit of rate constant k depends upon the order yes unit of rate constant depends on the order because the general formula is mole 1 minus n liter n minus 1 second inverse where n is the order of the reaction so yes its unit depends on the order so this is correct unit of k for first order is molarity second inverse no if you put for first order n should be equal to 1 so mole 1 minus 1 liter 1 minus 1 second inverse so the unit is second inverse but it is given as molarity second inverse which is wrong so this is the incorrect one so option d will be your correct answer c so easy questions are asked okay so let's let's move forward next question the rate constant of a reaction depends on the rate constant of a reaction depends on the temperature and the nature of the reaction these are the two factors it depends on so does it depend on temperature yes does it depend on pressure no extent of reaction no initial concentration of reactant no so it depends only and only on temperature so option a will be your correct answer c such easy questions are asked if you are clear with the concepts you can solve any question perfect Let's give this question as your homework. This will be your homework question because you need to solve a question on your own. Read this question. Try the question yourself because we have done a lot of questions like this. You will definitely be able to solve such types of questions. Okay. Yes. Perfect. With this, my dear students, let's end our session today. We have discussed a lot of things today. We discussed about what is the rate, how do we calculate rate. We studied about average rate, instantaneous rate. We also studied their graphs. We studied about the rate law, about order, molecularity, how to calculate order. See, just in a little span of time, we have discussed n number of things and it was super interesting, right? Yes, we also practiced a lot of questions. So, you only have to practice these questions. You have to solve the practice sheet so that you will be more confident while solving the questions. Yes, with this, let's end our session. I hope all of you enjoyed today's session. We'll meet in the next lecture. Till then, keep studying. All the very best. Thank you so much.